Well, hello. Welcome to the Oatana Today Show. I'm Shelley Whitehead. I want to thank you for joining us today, reminding you that you can see us six days a week right here on Charter Cable. Also, if you don't get a chance to check out what's happening today, you can always find us on the internet. You can find us at YouTube, Lip TV, as well as our Facebook page. And we've got a great opportunity for you right now. If you do like us on Facebook, you could win a pair of tickets to the Steel County Blades home game. And we want to say congratulations to Bill Bernard and Werner Knuth. Sorry if I said that wrong. But you, uh, they won two games, and we'd like you to join us, too. Just like us on Facebook, and you'll be entered to win those pair of tickets to the Steel County Blades home games. We want to remind you also that we're always looking for new ideas to have right here on the Oatana Today Show. So if you've got some ideas, suggestions, go ahead and send us an email at oatanatoday at charter.net. Or you can always give Leanne a call at 390 Five seven five one. We'd love to hear from you. Let us know how things are going. We're going to be right back. We've got Tom Coons with uh, the city of Wasika. Oh, I was going to say Wasika. How about Otana? Let's do Otana today. Sounds good to me. And then we're also going to speak with Mary Overly Olson and talking about commingled recycling. It's going to be a good show, so stick with us right here on the Otana Today Show. I'm Dan Branstead of Carlson Branstead and Company, certified public accountants. We support the Otana Today Show. Hi, this is Laura Ressler greeting you from the Steele County Historical Society's History Center where we're honoring the past and looking towards the future. We're proud to be a sponsor of the Oatana Today Show. And we're back on the Owatonna Today Show. I'm Shelly Whitehead. Hello, Tom. How are you this fine day? It is a beautiful day, and thank you for having me on. I'm so glad you, you were here. I, it's a little bit of an Indian summer this weekend. We had Perfect. some beautiful weather. Yeah, I love what the What a nice rain. weekend for MEA. For well, the wasn't it? Oh, they enjoy that. And you look fabulous in your fall colors. Oh, thank you very, very Celebrating much. it with us. Good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We've got so much to talk about. Let's go ahead and head right into what's going on in the Owatonna area. A couple things on the October 2nd meeting. Uh, as everybody knows, uh, we meet the first and the third Tuesday of every month at uh, 7 p.m. at City Hall. And October 2nd, uh, one of the things that the mayor gets to do is go out and recruit members for all the boards and everything. I think it takes about 87 different people wow. to serve the service boards that help the city council operate. And Laura Dallin was uh, appointed to the Park and Rec Board. Good. And what I usually do is look for the Leadership Boatana program and find somebody that's went through that program. And uh, uh, they'll be my first choice. But I'm always open for anybody that's interested. And we do have an opening for the Third Ward Planning Commission. So if anybody is interested uh, to be a member of the Planning Commission uh, and they're from the Third Ward, they can give me a call. So what would that detail for them to do that? Uh, they really uh, take care of all the stuff that comes for buildings and different plans that come into the city before it comes to the city council. So they took a look at it, make recommendations, and then move it forward to the city council. So that's a pretty important committee. So how can they find more information about that specific? It's on our webpage, okay. so they can go to our webpage and find that. Good, so, yeah. good. Uh, the other thing uh, on the uh, October 2nd was just a uh, fantastic uh, day for the city of Otana because we no longer own a hospital. Ah. Uh, so it was uh, Fairway <laughs> Foods and Mail Health Systems uh, signed the contract that week. and. Uh, if you look as of today, there's some fence going around, so they're trying to secure the area, and they'll start doing some demolition. The three houses on uh, the street there are also being included in that. I think they have till the end of the year, I think, in order to get those houses out of there. Mm -hmm. But those houses will come down along with the hospital, and uh, uh, by next spring, that'll be all cleared out, and we'll start construction, and we'll be fortunate enough to have Fairway Foods in our city. So another grocery store just... It's very central. It's a, it's a really a family-owned grocery store. 
And their concern was they wanted to be in the middle of town. Yes. And uh, the hospital's pretty close yeah. to the middle of town, so yeah. uh, that should be a good location for well, them. Good. Yay. And the other thing I'm excited about is uh, it's called Oscar Whiskey Alpha Land. It, Ooh, but sounds it's like a the code uh, of some transfer sort. of some <laughs> land out by Cabela's that's going to go to Walzer Chevrolet. Oh, okay. And so Walzer has uh, purchased uh, Hirsch, mm -hmm. and uh, they will uh, start construction this fall and build along the freeway. It's just going to be south of the church that's out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, they hope to have 500 cars on the lot, and uh, it'll be a great location for them. That whole area is being built up now, isn't it? It, it is. It's, it's been rejuvenated again. Yeah. Walzer will help rejuvenate that. So it hasn't been, uh, it's been kind of stagnant for a little while and hasn't been much growth going on. But now with Walzer coming on, that'll be re, re excite everybody Good. out in that area. And the nice thing about Walzer is it's another company that's come into Owatonna and really understands what Owatonna's values really are. They've already made a donation to the, uh, the, to the Park and Rec Department, so mm -hmm. the, one of the softball diamond uh, scoreboards, uh, they're sponsoring one of those up there. They've been involved in uh, uh, some cancer walks and everything, so they are taking an active role in our community, which is nice to see a company come yeah. from the outside and be involved within our community. That's Looking what it's all about. Looking to improve it as well as give uh, an uh, economic money but also other ways as well exactly yeah, yeah, exactly good. so which is always good <laughs> and then on October 16th it seems like this month must be the month for proclamations <laughs> uh, they always ask the mayor to do a proclamation for different events mm -hmm. and the Girl Scout troop uh, uh, for 2012 it, their their mission was take action centennial days of service and they really did a great job for the city they went out and cleaned all the storm drains on the street and everything all yeah. the debris and everything uh, they worked with their stormwater management team and uh, uh, really tries to help uh, the pollution that's going into the lakes mm -hmm. and the streams and everything. And cleaning out those storm drains are very, very important to that process. Mm -hmm. We also have uh, coming up this Thursday night at uh, 6 o'clock at the Owatonna uh, Eagles Club uh, Firefighter of the Year Award. Ooh. And Am so, I uh, nominated for that? Uh, let's <laughs> I think you started out with Wasika, not Owatonna, so, <laughs> so you no. may have been, so oh. the answer is it got taken off the list. <laughs> I tried so hard. I look at firefighters every day trying so hard to become one. It just is, I don't think that osmosis no, thing I works. Look at hey, <laughs> and But Charlie Sikora <gasps> is oh, our firefighter of the year, so Charlie. there is tickets available. It's a nice program. They have a great meal, and they have a great program after, so... If anybody's interested, I think the Owatan Exchange Club is the club that puts this on. Okay. So you can get uh, tickets from the Owatan Exchange Club or you can get them way, from the Eagles. It's a great way to support the firefighters in our city who protect Protect, us put all the their time. lives on the line yeah. every time they go out for a fire and everything. Mm -hmm. So it's a great way to do that. I think that's, that's a great idea. And we also have Manufacturers Week going on this week. And we don't so have any manufacturing in Owatonna. <laughs> oh, Owatonna <laughs> is a great manufacturing Isn't community. It, it really is, yes. and I love... I love Almost everyone I know has worked at some point in some sort of manufacturing capacity here in the city. And I think that's helped yep. them and also the city itself. Yeah, and manufacturing just does, it's a, it's a great asset to our state. Not only our city, but our state. So we were recognized Manufacturing Week this week, and Viracon is hosting a luncheon mm -hmm. out there at noon on Wednesday. So that was the proclamations that were due this week and, and this month, so there's been a lot of those. The other uh, important issue that we did was we... For all the streets and everything to get done, we mail out assessments. Okay. And so uh, along with the assessments getting mailed out, I think Jeanette had maybe the wrong address and she did a follow-up mail-in on them. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you have any questions on those assessments, uh, just call Jeanette up at the city. But one of the things that we've done in the past, if you want to defer your assessments and pay them over a 10-year period, uh, in the past the interest rate was 7% mm -hmm. on that deferment. And uh, with where the economy is now and what the bonds... So we're really going to do about a 2% of a bonds, which mm. means that it's going to be about 3.5% oh, interest nice. rates this year. So if you want to defer your assessments, uh, the interest rate has dropped from 7% to 3.5%, which is a significant savings. Yes, it is. And if you are a senior citizen and on a certain income level, you can apply for a form to completely defer those assessments for a later time period without any money involved mm -hmm. in it. Just defers them until your house is sold or something like that. 
and those forms are available at City Hall. So, so when you get this in the mail, don't freak out, but just find out what options you have as far as the assessments exactly. go. Exactly. Good. And if you want to pay them, you got till the end of the, I think this month in order to pay them without any interest or okay. any charges on to them. Uh, last thing I'll maybe cover is uh, uh, we've had some changes in our building inspection department. Uh, I think that in the past the Oatanis has um, had some negative impact on building inspections. I've had more negative comments in the past than I've had positive comments. But in the last year or two, we've uh, really changed that around. We've been more user friendly, more uh, friendly to our, our people and everything. And uh, we had Ken Beck as an interim um, building inspection department manager. And at the October 16th meeting, uh, we made it official that Ken Beck was our lead building inspection department. So Obviously making good changes so that people have a more positive experience. Yeah, and I think, you know, one of the things I always say about city government is that uh, we need to remember that we are really, uh, you are our bosses. <laughs> the taxpayers of Otana are our bosses, and we need to respond to that. And we need to respond to those in a positive manner, and we got to be user-friendly. Mm -hmm. We can't just be out there and think that we can run the show. It's uh, right. really uh, our taxpayers that are our bosses. and. We got to make sure we address their issues and respond to them. And I think a, an important people, thing for people to remember is that they're always welcome to the meetings where you discuss all of this information. And so give us again when those meetings are and when people can join. Meetings them. are at the first and the third Tuesday of every month mm -hmm. at 7 p.m. at City Hall. It's the lower level of City Hall. If you ever get to have been to one of those, it's where years ago when the orphanage was there, it was the uh, theater area. Ah, so okay. oh, that's in City Hall. So. The other thing is uh, the uh, uh, bowling alley is uh, becoming closer to being opened. Okay. It's, uh, they had some uh, people from the cities that were looking at it about once upon a time, but it is now, uh, I think, going to be operated by a local group of investors. Mm -hmm. uh, we are working very, very hard on trying to obtain the liquor license. <laughs> There's some hoops we have to sh uh, jump through for that, but mm -hmm. I think we'll see some information coming on the bowling alley within this week or next week. Good. Well, you've been a busy boy. It's, it's, it's an enjoyment. <laughs> and that's you can tell. You can tell that you like what you do and you're very efficient at it. We appreciate that L as well. Last, last oh, comment quick. I always said first and third Tuesday. Yeah. Next month is election on Tuesday, oh. so the meeting is on Monday. Monday. So the next uh, uh, city council meeting will be on the 5th instead of the 6th. Thank you for that reminder. Well, I want to appreciate, appreciate your time and uh, giving us all this information. And if you do have more questions, you can always check with City Hall for more information. We'll be right back with Mary Overly Olson right here on the Owatonna Today Show. Hmm. Hi, this is Barry Gillespie, president of ERA Gillespie Real Estate, where our pledge is to save you money, save you time, and simplify your life. And we're proud supporters of the Oatana Today Show. Hi, Ann Pluskanko here from Senior Place. Senior Place has new hours. Mondays and Fridays, we're open 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Participate in Zumba Gold, Bike Club, Table Tennis, Computer Classes, Speakers, and much more. Don't forget the Senior Place Partnership Program with 39 businesses giving discounts and incentives with your Senior Place Membership Card. Membership is only $35 for the year, which comes to just $3 a month to be a member. Consider joining us today. Effective Monday, October 15th, the clinic main entrance will be closed for construction. Please use our temporary entrance, the dialysis stores, and or the hospital main entrance. We appreciate your patience during our construction, but at the end, we'll have a pleasant entrance that is larger, warmer, and safe for our patients. Again, starting Monday, October 15th, the clinic main entrance will be closed for construction. Thank you. Do you know how to safely dispose of your expired or unused prescription and non-prescription medications? Not by flushing them down the toilet or putting them in the garbage. Doing so pollutes our rivers, streams, and drinking water supply. Take it to the box instead for safe, secure disposal. It's easy. Bring your unused medications in their original containers to the drop-off locations listed on the screen and drop them in the Take It to the Box drop box. Proper disposal of unwanted medications keeps them out of the hands of children and out of our environment. This is a message from the Safe and Drug-Free Coalition of Steele County. 
Hi, I'm Glenn Mager. And I'm Tim Thomas of the Brick Mager Funeral Home. And we're proud to serve the Medford and Owatonna areas with cremation and traditional funeral services. And we're proud to be a part of the Owatonna Today Show. And we're back with the Owatonna Today Show. I'm Shelley Whitehead. I'm here with Mary Overly Olson. Good morning. Good morning. She's the trash queen. I don't I know am. if you're aware of this or not, but <laughs> I love that you wear that with pride because you are actually making a difference on the environment with this program that you've well, got. Well, thanks. Going. It's I do this in front of kids mostly. I have a seven-minute song and dance with oh. a tape drum beat, and I show lots of props. I dance around a table, and the uh, biggest thing is I wear a cape made out of soda pop cans crocheted together and wow. a crown made out of a milk jug. So pretty popular with kids on that. I'm wondering how many of them go home and make their own cape and crowns. Uh, I will say there are a lot of kids under 10 who really want to be the trash queen. I have not met anyone over the age of 10 who wants to mm. be though. I'm wondering how many who so. goes Halloween as you this year. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> Little trash queens <laughs> running around all the time. I think that'd be fun. Yeah. So, uh, we, so if anyone does go as a trash yeah. queen, make sure you send her pictures. It, right. Do that. So that they can see that. Well, you are, just know everything we need to know about recycling uh, here in, much. in Steel County. Pretty much. So we've got some exciting things that are happening. Why don't we talk a little bit about the changes that are okay. making and then because we want to talk about what is new in the yes. recycling world. Yes. First thing I want to do is show the photograph here of a cart. I did not bring a cart with me. It's too heavy to carry. <laughs> um, and especially up the stairs. Oh, yes. There. But uh, every home within the city limits of Owatonna, Ellendale, Blooming Prairie, Medford, and Lazy U Mobile Home Park is getting one of these carts. If you live in a duplex, triplex, or fourplex, you get two, three, or four, depending mm -hmm. on how many units. Larger buildings are also eligible for recycling, but um, typically they have containers out by their dumpsters mm -hmm. and people can continue to How drop recycling there. This is called a 64 gallon cart. Okay. So, in other words, it holds three and a half times the volume of our open top bins. Which is in crazy thinking about we've all gotten used to making everything fit in that little tiny yeah. bin and now we're gonna have so much more room. well and a lot of people have gone to using two bins mm -hmm. I've, I've seen homes that have had three four or five bins well it's a lot more work to carry or drag mm -hmm. three four or five bins out to the curb than it is to wheel a cart like this and what are you hoping so. why have you got decided to go a city wide with this instead of maybe just here and there why are you hoping why have you got these well steel county uh, looked at several options for mm -hmm. our program we contract for our services mm -hmm. and last winter uh, we wrote a request for proposal and we had several options one is keep the same two sort program that we've had for many years 12 years or so um, another one would be to have the program that we are going to where actually the vendor in this case waste management won that contract um, provides the carts for us and they purchase the carts. Now over the five-year contract time that they will depreciate the cost mm -hmm. of those carts so at the end of the five-year contract the carts will belong to Steel County. That's why we're able to put a little logo on there saying ah, Steel nice. County and they're custom made for Steel County. Okay. Um, another option would be for the county to purchase the carts themselves but we anticipated that would be an additional five to six hundred thousand dollars to buy wow. twelve thousand carts wow. and that was a little too much <laughs> for us to take on right now yes. so we decided to go with that option this is the uh, um, the single sort option which is what we can do with the cart mm -hmm. it has been very popular throughout the nation mm -hmm. I, I get several e-newsletters in the waste industry and recycling industry and I and not a week goes by that I don't read an article about some community, whether it's Orlando, Florida, or Tampa, or Minneapolis, Winona, um, Rice County, Shakopee, um, many other communities mm -hmm. have already gone to this. Let's talk and about it. What does this mean? Well, what it means for you, the recycler, <laughs> and you, the recycler, is we take more than we used to. Okay, good. Um, especially in the plastics. So I'm going to just cover briefly a few of the plastics, like um, clear plastic containers mm -hmm. that you get berries in or you might get uh, baked goods in are definitely recyclable. Um, ice cream pails with their lids are recyclable. Um, we take yogurt cups with their lids. We take margarine tubs. We take um, empty juice concentrate mm -hmm. containers, again, with the lids. Here's the margarine container. So then that with the lids, is a, it's, I'm noticing a theme that maybe we had to worry about before? Yeah, well, first of all, we could not take wide mouth plastics until now. Ah. 
-hmm. That's number one. Number two, years ago we used to take, and we've taken plastic bottles for years, mm -hmm. but two years ago um, they discovered a way that people can recycle the cap right on the bottle. Um, it's going to be taken to a sorting facility and sorted, and then it's, uh, the bottle is chopped up and goes through a wash machine and that enables the, uh, that's a, I think the caps float to the top and the oh. rest of the plastic goes to the bottom. Because I was told so that you, that uh, someone said to me recently that if you throw away a bottle mm -hmm. with a cap on, they would actually throw it away. That used to be the case. And it's not, not anymore, at so least not in know. our program. That's now, really I can't speak for yeah. every program, but yeah. in the program with waste Good. management, that's the case. Good, because you uh, don't often don't, you want to keep the lid on because you don't want that yeah. liquid everywhere. Well, what we, we want the, it emptied. Yes. So, um, you know, if you're outside, dump it on the ground. If you're inside, <laughs> dump it down your sink <laughs> or your toilet. And then yeah, if it's real dirty, we'd like you to rinse it out. Mm. Um, it depends on okay. how dirty it is. Good. Just a few more things. We have taken these for a long time, but I do want to mention to people that we are taking all sorts of plastics. This happens to be a number four. This was from uh, like grape tomatoes. Mm. These are the trays from single serve frozen foods. Mm -hmm. They are also now recyclable. Do rinse them out though. They're usually pretty dirty. Um, Empty prescription bottles. Now, if you have prescriptions or you have drugs in your bottle that you're not using for some reason, those go to the law enforcement yes. center and the drugs will be disposed properly. If they're empty, though, and most of us finish off our prescriptions, then recycle the bottle and the cap. And the cap. Um, you'll be concerned about um, uh, identity, then just tear off the label mm -hmm. or mark it all out so people can't see it. A couple more things I want to mention. We've taken these for a long time, but uh, coffee cans mm -hmm. are now recyclable, as are empty plastic plant pots. Wow. That's kind of a new yeah. addition. We also are taking containers. So if you ever get milk or juice mm -hmm. or half and half in a Look carton, those are recyclable along with the cap. Kids like juice boxes, these are also recyclable. Wow. Sometimes broth comes in these type mm -hmm. of containers. They're called aseptic containers. All recyclable. Even, I'm not much of a soda pop drinker, but if you drink a lot, this, these big gulp containers mm -hmm. are definitely recyclable. If you want to do a good job, you could remove the, the cover here. So That's that lid number. is not? The, number six is the only number in a plastic that we really don't want. Okay. Most of those actually are expanded polystyrene, which is styrofoam, mm. and there's no market for that right okay. now economically. So I'm so, looking at this, and I'm imagining how much less is going to go in the landfill once you start recycling these kind yes. of items. We are anticipating, we built in our budget, that we would increase our tonnage in recycling between 20 and 30 percent. That's been the average throughout the communities in Minnesota soda when they've switched to single sort. Our neighbor to the north, Rice County, has the award on that. Mm -hmm. They switched to single sort in 2008 mm -hmm. and they increased their recycling by 60 percent wow. tonnage. Wow. Now, another good thing with our recycling program, up till now and to November 1st, after we pay for a sorting fee with mm -hmm. waste management, we get 25 percent of the revenue from the sales. Oh. November 1st, that sorting fee will go up a little bit, but we will get 50 percent of the revenue from the sales. So the more you and I and all of the listeners, watchers, recycle, the more we will pay for our program ourselves through our revenue versus having it on property taxes. Right now, the majority of our program is paid for on a special assessment on property taxes. And you're doing such a great thing for the environment as well. It's like well, like win-win. So. I'm looking so. at this as a, as a win-win <laughs> opportunity. Most people are really happy about it. Just a couple things about the carts. If you haven't received your cart, you should be getting one this week. Uh, they're about half, two-thirds done with dropping off the carts. Um, you can, we'd like you to begin using your cart immediately, but we know there's a transition time now, the end of October. Starting November 1st, though, we're not going to accept garbage, we're not going to re accept recycling, I should say, in the open top bins. They're using a different um, truck, and that truck has an automatic arm that grabs onto mm -hmm. the cart and lifts it up the bin sitting on the ground is too low for that. So uh, don't use your bin for recycling anymore. If you want to keep it and use it for something else, have at it. We don't want it. But if you want to give it up, we will pick it up on your first recycling day in November for your neighborhood. 
those then will be taken back to a factory, uh, melted down and recycled into more Yay, more recycling. Now you have a couple announcements that you want to get to. More, two announcements that have nothing to do, really not a lot to do with recycling, <laughs> at least not curbside. Um, the Retrofit Company is located on the very western edge of Owatonna. Um, is having a one-day collection this Saturday of electronics mm. and other items. Specifically, uh, it is this Saturday the 27th from 9 a.m. until noon. They will be taking TVs and computers for $5 each, which is about the cheapest place around mm -hmm. here. And they take other items as well. You can call me on the hotline for more information or call the retrofit companies. They're located on what used to be called Highway 14. Mm -hmm. I think it's now called Crane Creek Road. Okay. Finally, the Owatonna compost site will be closing an hour earlier starting in November, mainly because the days get shorter. Yes. So they will be starting November 2nd. They're not uh, open on Thursdays. Um, they will be open from 8 till 5, Good. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and 9 till 5 on Saturday. Thank you so much for your time. It's Thank fascinating you. to have you here. Right. And make sure you contact her for more information about your curbside delivery and pick up and that kind of thing. We'll be right back here on the Owatonna Today Show. Hi, I'm Amy Martinez. And I'm Adam Martinez, owners of Snap Fitness in Owatonna. Snap Fitness is a fast, convenient, and affordable fitness center, and we're proud supporters of the Owatonna Today Show. Here at the Owatonna Care Center, we strive to create an atmosphere of community and family. We have many family members who are highly involved in the care of their loved ones and the activities and events that are put on at the facility. There are many opportunities each month for families and residents to gather together for meals and various activities. We feel that it's important to make our residents feel like they are at home whether they reside here long term or they're here visiting for a short stay. We welcome community members to stop in at any time to be part of our community. Hello, I'm Sean McNulty with Brookdale Senior Living, Sterling House and Clarebridge, and we're a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. In 2011, United Way funded programs provided services to over 10,000 Owatonna residents. For the second consecutive year, the vast majority needed help to meet their most basic needs, food, clothing, housing, and safety. United Way of Steele County is able to sustain a safety net of direct services, prepare our children for the future, and provide seniors with support to age in place due to the generosity of our community. Please make a donation to United Way again this year. Our neighbors are counting on us, and we are counting on you. And we're back with the Otana Today Show. Just a quick few reminders for the community. Autism Spectrum Disorder Parent Support Group is October 23rd. This is the fourth Tuesday of the month. They have this every fourth Tuesday of the month. They'd love for you to come and talk and just get some support if you do have a child with aut autism. This is a great opportunity to talk to other people who are going through maybe some of the same challenges you are. It's from 6 to 7.30 at the Associated Church and they'd love for you to join them. Also, Click It or Ticket. It's an enhancement enforcement of the seatbelt law from October 12th to 26th. Remember to wear your seatbelts and make sure your kids are in appropriate child safety seats. It's for their safety. My kids hate it. They get so annoyed, but I remind them it's to keep them safe. Also, the the Owatonna Hospital is going to offer free sleep disorder seminar that's coming up Tuesday, October 23rd from 7 to 8 at the Owatonna Hospital Service Conference Room. If you've had some concerns of your own about maybe snoring or sleep apnea, this is a great opportunity for you to come learn a little bit more and find out um, maybe with some options you might have if you do have these kind of disorders. We did uh, also want to remind you that the Riverbend Nature Center in Faribault is inviting you to a jack-o'-lantern con contest. It's their second annual jack-o'-lantern contest. It's held as part of their Bats, Bones, and Bonfires at the Riverbend's Halloween Family Festival. It's a Saturday from 4 to 8. Pumpkins entered will be displayed and along the trail, which is, would be so cool to see that as you're walking along. We'd love for you to join us 12 and under. The pumpkins with the most votes in each category will win prizes. So check that out at the Riverbend Nature Center website. And we'll be back on Wednesday, so make sure you check us out there. And don't forget to, to like us on Facebook so you can win those pair of tickets to the Steele County Blades home games. We'll be back on Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. I'm Shelley Whitehead with Owatonna Today.